you can see they've given us rather than an individual package a location to a directory full of packages if I load this up you can see it's just a list of archives and uh, various different versions so there's it's not all of these we want because it says different versions of the same package but the um, file here will allow us to download all of those and a script also um, yeah the installation to automate it obviously it needs root access which is why I set that no password and they suggested it was recommended um, now the options to do the installation it's got the options here you can run, run the entire script as root is not recommended in case something happens use sudo which we've got or use su minus c command arguments which will ask for the root password that each time it loops around for each package um, and one way to do it they've got a little function here which you can add into bash um, now if we look at the script um, they've got here as root make install that's the function as root so it will run this um, and as you can see it runs sudo now it should never ask us for the password if you haven't put the no password in it will ask you for the password the first time and depending on how quickly each package can build it shouldn't ask you the password again but if it's at some time it will ask you the password so um, not having no password in that sudo configuration file is not foolproof it may stop the build but because I've put the no password in it should just sail through um, touchwood hopefully there, there won't be any other issues with some of the dependencies that I've added in okay so let's try and copy and paste this stuff in from the command line browser so I need to go back to the X windows libraries X org libraries that chapter there or that section rather we don't download anything here because believe it's all done for us I hope it is as we look we've got this script here yeah to download them as these commands here so let's go ahead and copy this steering file is effectively what it is or at least it will be initially after that it will be a file used for checking the downloads are successful So that's that file created. We can look at it. Let's check the file name is lib7. So that's the file there. In fact, it exactly fills a whole screen. So to download the required files using wget, use the following commands. So we'll just copy this. and this bit here and you can see after the download it does actually verify the checksums that have been generated so this will take a few minutes to download them and it should take just a few seconds to validate them at the end okay well, there's no errors at the end of that md5 sum check so they've all downloaded successfully so there's this note about the three different options to um,
install packages, ways around installing it without stopping the script. And we can add in this script by copying it, pasting. So there's a fu function called as root in the bash script. You can see the bash completion runs. And you can see it's running sudo because it couldn't understand what to do. Um, so let's go back. Some libraries come with a test suite. If you wish to execute them, either comment out the rm-rf below so that after the library is installed, you can come back to the corresponding directory and run make check or do individual builds running the test after each of those distributed with working test suites. Alternatively, you can uncomment the line, make check, and at the end, check the results with that command there. So let's try uncommenting out the um, make check when we do this. And first of all, we have to run this script, uh, sorry, this bash option, option so that the subshell will run until an error occurs and hopefully we don't get that. Now let's copy this here. Paste that in. And this is the bit here we copy down to here. I want to run the tests so I'll ignore that hash and just copy to the done command and all we do now is wait for these to run I'm not sure how long they'll take but I imagine it'll be between 10 and 20 minutes
Okay, so that has finished. Doesn't look like there's any errors. And the only way we can be sure is to um, type exit to exit that subshell that had the option to quit on an error. And now if this logs us out, then we had an error. Uh, if it doesn't, then we didn't have an error. You can see there's nothing changed. So we, we definitely did not have an error. Um, I would have expected the error to be on the screen anyway. So that was all good. Um, as you remember, there was a command here for checking the test results if you want, wish to look at them. But I would say, being as everything ran through without any interruptions, it's probably a little bit pointless. Um, but you can see there's the summary for um, some of the tests there. So there's some information about the options there. Um, obviously there's a with FOP there which I'm not going to be using at the moment, or I haven't used at the moment but will do the next time around when I reinstall. Um, so configuration says if you've chosen to install XORG into user then no further configuration is necessary and you can, can skip the rest of the section. If you've opted for an alternate prefix you should create two sim links to satisfy the expected environment of several packages. Execute the following commands as the root user. So what we can do, just to be doubly sure, it should exist. But before you run this, just check that environment variable does it actually exist. Um, it should do because we've been using it with that script, and there it is there. So that just confirms it's all good. So we'll put these two commands in as the user, uh, super user. They've gone in and that's it for the XORG libraries. Uh, There's a description of all the libraries that have just been built. So next we're going on to XCBUtil.